In this video, I'm going to do a very simple definite integral. And a definite integral is different than an indefinite integral. First off, notice we have these numbers in the top and bottom of our integral sign. These numbers are aptly named. The bottom one is called the lower limit of integration. Lower limit of integration. And the top one, as you might be able to guess, is called the upper limit. of integration. So just some terminology there. And basically what you do in these problems is you find the antiderivative. Normally it, without the numbers you're finding the most general antiderivative. A definite integral is going to turn into a number so long as this function is continuous over this interval. But basically, you just find an antiderivative just like normal. So the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed divided by 3. The antiderivative of x to the first will get x squared over 2. The antiderivative of negative 2 will be negative 2x. And in these problems, we'll leave off the plus c. And we'll talk about why in just a second. Now we make a little bar over here. 4 and 3 are upper and lower limits of integration. And this is just reminding us now to plug them in. So the first thing you do is everywhere you have a variable, you take your upper limit of integration and you plug it in. So I'll plug it in here, here, and here. All right, well, let me do that. So if I substitute that in, I'm going to get 4 cubed over 3 plus 4 squared over 2 minus 2 times 2. And then what we do is we subtract off when we plug in the lower limit. And just like we plugged the upper limit in, we're going to plug the lower limit in everywhere as well. It's a good idea to use parentheses because you're going to have to distribute the negative to every term if you don't simplify first. So I'll get 3 cubed divided by 3, so now I'm plugging 3's in, plus 3 squared divided by 2, minus 2 times 3. And I realize I just made a mistake here. I plugged a 2 in here, I should be plugging a 4 in here, so sorry about that in case you're wondering what the heck's going on, absolutely right. So I've got 4 cubed, 4 squared, 2 times 4, and then I'm going to subtract off plugging a 3 in everywhere. And we could simplify this down, you could definitely simplify everything down in the parentheses in the first part, simplify everything down in the parentheses in the second part take that number minus the new number, and that'll be your solution. So this is the basic idea with the definite integral. The, uh, this number is not something completely just out of the blue. It does have a geometric interpretation, and we'll talk about the geometric interpretation of a definite integral in another video.